guys, this is Heather from HealthyVeganRecipes.net. Sorry that my kitchen is kind of dark today. It is a cloudy, rainy, gray kind of day outside. And on days like this, what I want to do is make a cup of tea, curl up on the couch with a book, and some brownies. That's what we're going to make today. So I hope you guys are excited. Phil's pretty excited for me to make these. I have made them a bunch of times in a few different varieties of ways. So I'll talk about that as I go through making them. The one that I'm going to show you today uses no sugar, no oil. What we're going to do is work with the natural yumminess of whole foods. I'm going to make things really easy on myself today and do most of this in my food processor, but it's totally okay if you don't have one. This recipe comes together really nicely just with regular bowl and utensils. Okay, base of our brownies is the exciting part. It's going to be some kidney beans. You can also use black beans if you like. Depends what you have, what you enjoy, but basically they're gonna have the same texture. Neither of them has much flavor, so they're both gonna go really well into our brownies. So I'm gonna dump those into my food processor along with, for sweetness, a banana. Try to get one as ripe as possible. And if you are not using a food processor, what you can do is use a potato masher or you can use a fork and just mash up those beans and banana. Now the third ingredient for added sweetness is going to be some fresh dates. These are medjool dates. They're the best kind to use. They come with pits in them. So you have to take the pit out, but that's really the only downside. They're going to make things super sweet in here. And this is one part where a food processor is really, really going to help. So if you're, if you're making this without a food processor, you might want to go with the option instead of dates and use some pure maple syrup or some unrefined sugar like coconut sugar or sucanat. Okay, what's next? Vanilla. Okay, we're getting a few more ingredients into the food processor, the last of which is some natural peanut butter. You want to look for one that lists just peanuts in the ingredients, no added sugar, no added salt, no added oils. If you are allergic to peanut butter or you're sensitive or you're making it for taking to school or something like that, you can just sub this with any other type of nut or seed butter like almond, cashew, sunflower, and It'll get the same texture. It won't have quite the same flavor, but that's okay. If you want the rest of the details on what else is in here, just head over to my site, healthyveganrecipes.net. I will post the ingredients and amounts right under this video. So just give that a blend until it's nice and smooth. So after a couple minutes, it should be nice and creamy and smooth. All right, next into the mix is some baking soda, some baking powder, and some carob or cocoa powder. Now, if you are curious as to which one is better, which one you might use, I did a post about that this week. You can check that out on my nutrition site, healthyeatingstartshere.com. What I like to do is a mix. So I'm gonna do half a cup of carob and a quarter cup of cocoa. There we go. Now we're looking a little more like brownies, right? Looking good. Okay, the last thing you're going to add in here is some flour. I'm going to use some sorghum flour, which is a gluten free whole grain that the wonderful and talented Allison Kramer turned me on to. But you can use any type of whole grain flour you like. The key is just you don't want to mix it too much. So I'm going to continue doing this in my food processor, but you can also take this out and just stir it. Just okay, so there is our brownie mix, and the very last thing I'm going to add in here is a little bit of raisins. You can do raisins or dried cranberries or chocolate chips or a mix. So I'm going to do part raisins and part chocolate chips. And then I like to line my brownie dish with parchment paper so that it makes it super easy to take out, cut, and then clean the dish, but you can also just lightly grease it with some coconut or olive oil. 
Now because when I make brownies and cookies and muffins and all that kind of stuff, I try to reduce the sweetener as much as possible. I find that it's never a bad idea for me to taste things before I pop them in the oven because if they're not sweet enough, at this point I could add more sweetener if I wanted to, whereas after they're baked, not gonna happen. Mm, I really like it. Some people may want to add a little bit more sweetness to this, so you could have added more dates at the beginning, or you could add a little bit of maple syrup at the end, but, um, but I really like it. So I hope you guys do too. All you're gonna do is pop these in the oven at 400 degrees, and it'll take about 20 minutes, maybe 30, depending on how true your oven is to the actual temperature it's supposed to be at. I've also done these on the barbecue, which is a really awesome thing to do in the summer when you don't wanna heat up your house. It goes faster. Uh, because it's a higher temperature. It's like 450 on low, so it takes more like 20, 20 minutes, maybe 25. So they have baked and cooled and are ready to get out and cut. See, the beauty of putting parchment in here is that you can just lift this out and cut like that. If you have a silicone baking dish, that's also another good way to do it. So then I'm just going to cut this into 16. But I'll just cut one first so that you guys can see the inside, how rich and fudgy and deliciously moist it is. If anything deserves a super close up, it's that brownie, right? I brought these brownies to a party once and people didn't know that I had made them so they had no inkling that they were healthy and they certainly didn't know that they were made with beans and everyone was like, ooh, these brownies are really good, who made them? And I got to say, oh, it was me. They're, uh, they're made with kidney beans. And everyone looked at me like, really? <laughs> it was great. It was fantastic. Okay, so make the brownies. Enjoy them on a rainy day with a cup of tea and a good book or just whenever you want. Um, they freeze really well. So if you want to, you can cut them up and put them in little baggies and put them in the freezer. And um, having a, a frozen brownie is pretty nice. Or you can heat it up if you want in the toaster oven or something. Okay, so that is that. Go check out the recipe. It's right underneath this video. If you're not on my site, there's a link right there. So go check it out and try out some healthy brownies for yourself. Enjoy, and I'll see you again sometime soon.